Okay, now we're going to do a standing crucifix. Okay, I'm going to start from a snap down. All right, moving on my opponent. Reach up. Remember, keep your elbows in as you're reaching up. Here, move it in, and I'm going to snap them down. Now, once I once I get this position, I snap them down. I want to cover that space with my chest. Okay, I want to cover it. I'm going to snap them down. I'm going to cover that space with my chest. As I'm covering that space, my elbows stay in tight, and I swim them underneath his armpit. So I snap him down. Chest goes on the back of his head so he can't look back up. Then I swim my hands underneath to here. I have a grip on the on his back. Now I want to put my put my chest on his back or on the top of his neck and push forward for the crucifix. Now what may happen, you may find yourself, you know, maybe some of the better guys may be a little bit more, a little more crafty defensively. And as you snap down and you come through here, you may start to lose the position and he may slide out to the side and start pulling back. Immediately switch to the guillotine. You got the guillotine right there because in order to get out, he's going to have to start creating space. And the space that he needs to create means lifting his head up. So as I'm going for the double crucifix, I can finish here. Or if he starts to lift his head up, automatically go to the guillotine. That's a two for y'all. Y'all need to give me my props for that one. All right, now full speed, double, cruci double arm crucifix. your classic, classic flying arm lock. This is for you young guys out there trying to impress the ladies. This works um, and it'll impress everybody you do it to when you do it because this is a high, flashy move. And I used to love this one, especially when I was younger. Now, let's talk about how to do this. Okay, first thing you have to have is a nice, tight grip on your opponent because the idea is in order to do a flying arm lock, you have to stay close because you can't get too much space. Too much space, you already got gravity pulling down on you. So it'll be easy for them to pull out. So you need to be close to your, to your opponent. So I have, right now, I want to have a collar tie here. And I also want to control this arm here. These are the things that I'm using. I, these are the things that I'm using to, to help myself jump up. You have to treat your opponent like he's a set of monkey bars when you're doing this, not another person, like a set of monkey bars. Now, I'm starting here and here. The first thing I want to do is just to get a little bit of momentum, you can kind of take a step with one leg and then this leg's going to shoot across. I'll shoot this leg right across his chest. I'm trying to get my knee as high as I can because I want to stay as tight as I can. And you can also do this move by throwing your leg underneath the armpit coming this way. However, you know, however you want to do it, it's up to you. But for right now, we're going to do it throwing the, the knee right across the chest. And I'm, on, I'm also going to hook my foot on the side of his ribs. So as, I'm, as I have my grip, I bring this up as high as I can. Now from here, I need to use his momentum. As you're pulling down on a person, what happens is they want to brace themselves up. That's, it was, that's what's going to keep, get you that, that, that sturdiness in order to jump up on top of them because they're bracing themselves up as you're pulling down. So as I bring this shin across his chest, I'm pulling down, he lifts up, that's going to help me jump up, stand as tight as I can, then bring my leg all the way over his head. So I'm going to jump up, and I'm holding on to him as tight as I can, bringing this leg all the way over his head. Now from that point, I want to stay as tight as I can as we go down. Because he, as he's up, he braced himself up. Then you just pull him back down towards the floor. Stand tight, stand tight, stand tight. Then you finish the arm lock. But the key is getting this leg up as high as you can, and stand tight, using this guy like a set of monkey bars. All right, now full speed. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, now um, we're going to 
to do a scissor sweep to an inside heel hook. Now I want to work from a position where my opponent, he's got an underhook on me. All right, now when he has an underhook on me, I'm, it's, it's normally bad when, when somebody has an underhook on you, but you want to use it to your advantage because now you can trap the arm. So once he, let's say we're fighting from this position, he has an underhook, and I want to take this arm and overhook it tight to my chest. Now he's not going to be able to get it back. And now, once I have here, I want to stand off to the side of him. So I don't want to be totally in front of him here because he still has access to my legs or whatever. And he still has that underhook. That's important. So you want to get off to the side and almost a little bit behind. And I want to control his head here. I push his head away here. Now what I'm going to do is in one motion, I want to bring his leg in front of his body. This is my leg that's going to knock him backwards. All right. The other leg's going to come be brought behind his knee to bend his knee as your first leg brings him backwards. Now, you know, in certain grappling tournaments, like say Naga, for instance, you can't just jump up and, and bring him back. You can't do it because it's very dangerous, so you have to put a hand on the floor. You know, other, other uh, areas of uh, competition, say if you're fighting MMA, you can jump up, so, you know, no need to worry about putting your hand on the floor. But if the competition uh, doesn't allow you to do that, put your hand on the floor. It makes no difference. You'll still be able to get the move. So I want him to be off on the side, almost behind, controlling the overhook. And for the sake right now, I'll just put my hand on the floor. I'm going to bring my leg up to his waist. The other knee will, become, will be brought behind his knee. I want to stay nice and close, nice and tight to him. So I'm going to come through and sit him back. Once I sit him down, my armpit's going to go over top of his toes. This foot will come over top of his leg to keep him from rolling over. So I'm going to hook here, this on top, armpit on top of his toes, squeeze your knees, and finish your heel hook. It's an eye fight athletics, you know? Eye fight athletics. All right. Full speed. This situation, I have my opponent's back from here. All right, when I have my opponent back, don't give him too much. You know, don't get don't you know reach around here and giving him your arms. Don't give him too much. And I want just a little bit of space in between our legs because I can't allow him to see what I'm about to do. Now, I'm gonna choose a side. Whatever side my head's on, that's the side I'm gonna work with. So if my head right now I have my head on on the left side of my body, I'm also gonna use my left leg to make this technique work. So I have my head on the left side. I'm going to step inside his leg, between his legs, with my left leg. As I do that, I'm going to turn my body around and fall on his leg, or right on the opposite side of his leg, outside of his leg. I'm going to step inside, I'm going to turn face backwards, and I'm going to fall to the side. When I fall to the side, I'm going to raise my hips and bring my leg to the inside of his body, to, from the inside to the outside. Triangle my legs and get him to fall backwards. Once he falls down, I'm going to put my foot on top of his body to keep him from coming back up. So, once I get him to fall down, my legs are trying. But I'm, I try on my legs to get that more pressure to get him to fall down. Now that he's down, I just put that foot on top of his body. This is going to keep him from sitting up. Now, I have the inside heel hook. Get the pressure. Squeeze your knees and finish. Now let's do that fast speed. Man, you wanna make noises on the floor? All right, now, in this situation, my opponent has my back, so check out what I'm going to do. He's got my back. First thing I want to do is I need to break his grip. All right? Makes no sense working on you know, different situations. If you can't at least break the grip, so you have to break the grip. 
how I'm going to break the grip. I sit in my base so he doesn't throw me all around. I'm going to sit in my base, get my legs, my hips underneath me, get my thumb inside. I'm going to start working on his hands. I'm going to break his grip. As soon as his grip is broke, reach behind his elbow. Look. Be behind his elbow. You don't want to be here like this, or not even on top of that, but pull his arm out. I don't want that. I'll be above his elbow, grab my hands. All right, now from this position, there are so many options, so many different things that you can do. You know, you can, from here, I can lean on his shoulder and do one of these things and rock him all the way down. That's cop stuff. That's police stuff. But So I don't want to do that stuff. I want to do some grappling stuff. So from here, I can, I can uh, work from here. I can sit through and throw him that way. I can come through here and that way, a lot of different things that I can do from here. But for right now, oh, oh I almost forgot. I get one of my favorite moves. I come through here, stick my foot in, and throw him over the top, follow him through, finish with the Kimura here. But for right now, what I'm going to do, break the grip. Come above the elbow. Lock it down tight. I'm tight on his arm. Now from here, one of the easiest, probably your most high percentage moves that you're going to get is, is to catch his leg here. This is going to keep him from running around towards your back because he may be able to try to reclose re his grip if, um, if you give him the space. So the first thing I'm going to do is, when I have this, I'm going to catch his leg. This is going to keep him from running around. Now I'm going to lean on his armpit and sit down. As I sit down, I'm not going to sit back. I want to sit down right next to him so that our bodies are next to each other and we're parallel to each other. So I'm actually couldn't you kind of take a step forward with this foot right next to his foot as I sit down to here. Once I get here, I'm going to trap his leg in, figure four of my legs, and come here. This is going to keep his leg under control so he doesn't roll over and get out of the move. Now once I'm here, this is just like finishing a Kimura from your guard. I can't finish flat on my back. I need to get my hips out. Here. Now notice when I get my hips out, this also straightens his leg even more, putting more pressure on his leg so now he can't defend. Now my hips are out, and I can finish. Let me change the angle. If I initially start here, I don't want to be on my back. I want to get on my side so now that I can finish properly. Stretch that leg out so he can't get to his knees and try to roll out. Then put pressure, put pushing his wrist up towards his head. Now let's do that in a little bit faster motion. Hey guys, this is a hot dog move. This is one of the flashy moves again that you're going to get here. Very advanced type of position. All right, I'm going to start. We have distance here between ourselves. But you know, it's okay, guys. You can sacrifice yourself in order to get a submission. What's the worst that can happen? You miss, you get back up to your feet. That's okay. So now we're going to work on a situation where you can catch a guy off guard. If he's not ready for this, you'll catch him. So what I want to do is I'm going to start here. I'm just going to sacrifice myself. I'm going to turn around and go right to my back. When I go right to my back, the important thing is that you attach yourself to his leg. Once you attach yourself to his leg, just get creative with your position. If you understand leg locks and you've been watching the, pre the previous DVDs on leg locks, you'll understand once you attach yourself to the leg, you got a numerous amount of options. So I start here. I'm going to roll back, raise my hips. I'm going to come up on my shoulder. I'm going to raise my hips, come through. And for me, I'm going to take my inside leg, go in between his legs, Straighten, this one will come on the hip, and I'll bring him back and I'll attack the knee bar. I also got the heel hook, you can ankle lock. The important thing is that you attach yourself to that leg. You roll back, raise your hips up, get your hips above the knee, and go to work. Let your magic do the, do the work for you. All right, this is an advanced move, but it works because the guys in Japan do it all the time. Let's do it in fast motion.
Okay, I'm going to be looking to catch my opponent. Anytime he makes a mistake or doesn't do anything or doesn't do anything to advance his position soon enough. I'm going to start my opponent right now. Has me in a single leg. Always for me, I'm going to be looking to first get out of the single leg here. So I'm pushing his head, trying to kick back or do what I can. So what I'm going to do, if I can't break his grip, I'm going to put my leg on the outside, then grab his wrist from the inside. I got to have control of this. I want it to be tight. I want to make sure his elbow is above my leg. If it's if he just has kind of a grip here, I should be able to break it anyway, but I want to keep it tight in order so that I can do the omoplata. So I'm going to pull it up as I'm here. So I'm pushing off. I can't defend the, the, the initial single leg. I'm going to grab his wrist, keep it in control, and keep it tight. Now, on the same shoulder that I have that's closest to him, that's the shoulder that I want to roll over. So I'm going to look behind me, go down to my shoulder, and I'm going to roll. Keeping his, arm, keeping his arm tight. I can also keep it tight by using the other hand on it as well. But I just want to keep it tight. I don't want to lose it as I'm going over the top. So I'm going to roll through, holding this tight. I'm going to roll all the way through. Here, as I get to here, my leg will chop down on his armpit to get him to go forward. Still controlling the hand. I don't want to let this go. Keep the hand tight to your hip. Once you get here, sit up, change your legs and finish the on fly. Now let's go a little bit faster. Make me look like a rock star. Okay guys, here's a, 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 one of your uh, defenses on the single leg. First thing from the single leg is you have to notice the placement of his head. All right. right now he has a single leg on me here. And this is, a, this is okay, all right? But what I want in order to get the technique, the rolling Kimura, what I want to do is I want to get his head on the outside. So if he doesn't put it, some guys will automatically just put their head on the outside and try it. And which is wrong because it's going to be a lot easier to defend. So, if he's trying to do a proper single leg, then the first thing I want to do is I want to start to push his head away. All right, so I'm digging my elbows in, digging my hands in, I'm going to start to push his head away. Now naturally, just natural human instinct is to push back. If I'm pushing away, he's pushing back. So what I'm going to do is I'm pushing away, he pushes back. Now I'm just going to kind of move my body out the way and bring his head to the outside. Now I got him where I want him. Now from here, I'm going to reach over his back underneath his arm and grab the Kimura. Now with, from here, what I want to do is I can't just fall back and try to roll. What I need to do here is I need to take my foot, this foot, and I'm going to step up to here. And I'm going to sit down where my other foot is. I need to get my body underneath it so that he can roll over top of me. If I'm too far away from him, now I'm like trying to pull him over top. I don't want to pull him over top. I want him to naturally roll over top of me. So his head's on the outside. I have the Kimura. Now watch the footwork. I'm going to let me turn a little bit. Watch the footwork. I'm going to step up to here. I'm going to sit down and kick. I'm going to hold on to the Kimura after I get him all the way over. Then I'm going to step over his body and continue to roll through. So as I landed, I landed here, I'm going to step over, sit out, and finish the Kimura. Now, let's do it fast. Okay, this situation, my opponent has my back with a body lock. 
The first thing you want to do if, if anybody has control of your back from the standing position is you can't be standing straight up erect like this. He's going to throw you or he's going to take you down somehow. So get your base down low. So I'm going to squat at my base. Now I have to break the grip. All right? And because I'm working on the arm lock, I want to work on the arm that I have more access to. And I have more access to this arm. It makes no sense for me to try to work on this arm. His arm is behind me. So I'm going to work on the arm that's in front of me. So first thing I want to do, base down, get control of his hands. Now, when I have control of his hands, I'm going to break his grip. As I'm breaking his grip, I'm going to start to turn his wrist up. I'm going to turn his palm up because if his hand is down, it's going to be hard to finish with the lock. So as I'm breaking it, I'm going to start to turn it up. Now once I turn it up, as it's, as it's starting to turn up, I'm going to reach around his elbow and then make my figure four. As I'm pulling his hands away from each other, I'm going to reach around the elbow and make my figure four. Now here's my figure four lock. I'm going to lock down my elbow close to my body. I'm going to push his hand towards the floor as I roll my wrist up and hyperextend his elbow. But the key is if his palm is face down, it's going to be difficult because you'll be bending it back here in which you would go to some of the Kimuras that we're going to work that you've seen uh, in other DVDs. And you've probably seen earlier if you've been watching this DVD. So, but for now, I want to break the grip. So I have to roll his hand up. As it's starting to roll up, come around the elbow, figure 40 arms, and extend. Locking the elbow in and extend it. Now, fast motion. In this situation, my opponent gets me in a collar tie, and this is how I'm going to deal with it. I'm going to fling him all around like a little rag doll. All right, first things first, he gets control of the collar tie here. I got to break that. I'm going to take my hand, my opposite hand, reach on the back of his hand. As you can see, I'm going to reach on the back of his hand. And I'm going to take my shoulder. As I'm pulling off, I'm going to punch his hand off with my shoulder and grip under here for the two-on-one. This is called a rushing. So I'm going to pull it up. So he grabs, take it off. Now I'm going to switch my grip, reach to a grab my wrist from here. Now once up here, I'm going to I'm going to step across his body, putting his hand to his chest as I sacrifice my body for the roll and to roll him all the way over. So I'm going to need to sacrifice my body. You can't hesitate on this or else he won't go because you need to put all your weight on his arm in order for him to roll through. So as I have the grip. I'm going to step through, put this into his body, and I'm still leaning on his shoulder, and I'm going to sit all the way through as I roll. From here, I don't stop. I'm going to continue to, to stay attached to him. I'm going to come up, knee to the ribs, step over, and finish with the arm bar. Now let's do that at full speed. You know, I, I think I almost forgot a technique, so, you know, I wanted to put this one in there. Uh, another option that you can have from the Kimura. Um, and you, guys, there's, there's many different ways you can get to this. So you can do it off the back, right, or, or the back um, when he has your back and you break it. Or, you know, you can do it, you can even sacrifice yourself off of an over and under position just coming to here. A lot of different ways to get, it, get in this position. It happens often. Or it can be off of a single leg attempt. Where he's outside here, and I just pick it up here. All right, so now, uh, but what we're going to work on now is uh, a very important um, uh, finish that we can have from here. So I'm controlling the wrist, locking them down nice and tight. Don't want to leave space. Keep it tight from here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to step close to his foot. I'm going to bring my leg up. 
I'm gonna go knee to knee as I kick his leg straight back. So I'm here, controlling the grip, kick his leg straight back, and also thrusting my shoulder forward. So simultaneously thrusting my shoulder forward, kicking his leg straight back. Have my grip, step up, leg comes forward, and he falls. I'm still controlling the arm. I'm gonna put my knee in his ribs, step over his head, keep him nice and tight, knees together, flat on the face, hand in, and finish with the arm bar. Now, full speed. from the collar tie. Now what I'm going to make sure now is that I have a tight grip of his arm that's on a collar tie. This will not work. This is my handle that I'm going to be holding on to as I throw him over my body. So I, he has a collar tie on me. I have one on him. I'm going to lock it down. Okay, Don't be, loosey, don't be lazy and loose with this hand. You need to be tight. All right, what I'm going to do is my first step, let me make sure you guys can see. I'm going to take my first step. It's going to be a cross. Step right across. Or right in between his feet. As I'm doing that, I need to take my, my arm, to, uh, release the collar tie, and I'm going to bring it up underneath his armpit tight. Elbow deep underneath the armpit and lock it in. And I'm also going to try to catch it with my shoulder. I want all this to be tight. Again, guys, this is your handle. This is what you have to hold on to as you're making your roll. But I'm locking him in tight here as I step across to here. I'm also pulling this down. Keeping this attached to my body, nice and strong. Now, my other leg is going to shoot all the way through in between his legs. To here. All the way through. So as I step in between, I'm going to turn, and I'm going to shoot my other leg all the way through to here. Now, this knee will plant. Now, notice where I'm at. I'm pretty much, he's over top of my body. This is going to make your roll a lot better. Now, I'm going to pull him through. It's in my head, I'm going to try to shoot my head all the way in between my legs and make my body a ball in which he can roll over. So once I get here, I'm going to roll, roll him through for the drop teosaki. So now I'm just still controlling the arm. Don't let go of the arm. Bring your knee up, step over the head, and finish. Now, that's the slow motion version. When you're making your steps, it's very important that you do it fast. So if, if he's standing here as I'm making my steps, I'm stepping and I'm dropping all the way down fast. I'm like getting a nice good spin. Because the faster you spin, the more, the more uh, momentum you're going to have in order for him to roll over top of you. Also, it's important that you have this handle nice and tight. Deep here, don't lose the shoulder. Sometimes people lose the shoulder here and then they lose the whole arm. So keep your shoulder in deep, heavy down on the arm. Step, step, and finish. Now, faster motion. family now we're going to do another situation from the over and under position first things first I have my over and under position here what I want to do is I want to put his arm in a compromising position uh, in sort of a modified Americana so I'm taking it here I'm going to slide my form underneath his elbow you see what happens he starts to bend a little bit so as he's bending as I'm sliding so I'm also trapping his wrist underneath my body and just kind of turn it see what happens to his body and his arm kind of turns in front this is what I want to do I want to get this position here so I start from here, I'm going to take my hand and slide it through as I'm trapping. Now from here, you can lock your arm, you can, you can figure for your arm here, but we're going to get to the head. 
So after I have his arm bent, I can figure for my arm, and then I'm going to come up to the head, keeping him nice and tight. Now from here, you just you know you can really be easy, really, very easy to off balance my opponent from here because his arm is being torqued. I have control of his head. So what I'm going to do from here, I, I have good balance. He's he has bad balance. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to step back and get him to step forward with his with the same side leg. So as I'm stepping back, I'm looking down at his foot, and one, once he lifts his leg, I'm going to take. Now from here, I got all kinds of things I can do. I can. Modified Americana, you can do it. You can do whatever. You can let go of the arm, go towards the legs. I mean, you just took him down and you got his arm in all kinds of crazy positions. But for today, all I want to do is knee in, step over the head, take the arm and take the arm and break the arm. All right, now let's do that in a little bit faster speed. Okay, this is your classic wrist lock. It's so easy, it's so simple, and you can actually, you can catch people doing this all the time because they're not paying attention to it because it's so easy that people just kind of forget about this. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to catch him reaching. He reaches, he's posting off on me, and this is perfect. He can post off on my shoulder. If he really makes a mistake of putting it on my chest, that's exactly what I want. But he may, you know, he may not be that stupid, so he'll put it on my shoulder. So what I'll do is I'll just move it to where I want it. So as I'm moving it to where I want it, I'm moving forward. This is also getting that bend in his elbow that I want. So I'm moving forward and I'm going to put my hand on this, uh, my hand on top of his hand as I'm moving forward. Now from here I'm going to reach up under the armpit and start to create that angle that I need to put the pressure on his wrist. So I'm going to reach up under his armpit, start to pull in. As I'm pulling in, I'm also going to reach down towards his elbow to keep his elbow stationary. So I'm going to be pulling in with the armpit, pulling, keeping his elbow stationary with this, this arm as I push my chest forward and it puts the pressure on the back of his wrist for the wrist lock. So if you uh, put the arm in the right place, armpit, elbow, pressure. Now full speed. 